Okay, so we're gonna use our studio lighting. This is how we use studio lighting and how we get it set up, okay? You're in Maya right now. Kylie, this might change for you and I'll tell you why later. You might import it the other way, but I wanna show you guys how to export a file. We talked about grouping, cleaning, and history. So look, here's my awesome rocket chair right here. Do you see this? I'm gonna select my rocket chair right now. I'm gonna group it and have it as one item. It's one entire item in my key scene. And Maya, I'm gonna take this right now. I'm gonna go under file and I'm not gonna to go to save or any, well, you've already saved it as your own backup. I'm gonna export just the model. So when just the model is selected right here, if I come over here, I have export selection under the file menu. I'm gonna click this open. I'm gonna export it as a Maya binary, okay? And then all these things are checked. I'm gonna tell it where to export. And I'm gonna say export selection. I'm gonna put it on my desktop. I always export my model as an underscore. There's a reason for that. Because then when I if, I, if I save it as badass rocket chair, when I open it up in the new file under the outliner, it's gonna have the whole name of the file and then the name of the group. So it'll say badass rocket chair and then it'll say group one, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just the little dash then doesn't make it super long, okay? So I'm gonna export this right now to the desktop as an underscore. Export selection. Did it exist? Yes, I wanna erase it, done. When that's done, I'm gonna close that Maya file. That's done. Then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna open up studio lighting. Okay, so this is what the studio lighting looks like. Let's look at the whole thing. It's a sphere that's set up. There's some lights in here. It's all ready to roll. It's your own little photography studio ready to go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open this up, come in here and look, you'll see that little backdrop of paper there. My goal now is to import my model into this scene, okay? So now I'm gonna come under file here. I'm gonna to go to import, open up the auction box, just to make sure. I want to get, let's say, all the groups, um, maybe remove duplicate shading network, ignore version, and then I'm going to come back here and say import. It's going to ask me where. I'm going to click on my desktop, find the underscore, and hit import. Voila. Okay. Some of you are going to get this when you import it. You'd be like, oh no, what do I do? You just scale it down and get it into the middle of your photo studio. It's not that complicated, right? Don't panic. If it imports big because your scale was larger than one Maya, doesn't mean it's not gonna work in here. Just select the whole object. The object's grouped and clean. And I could scale it down, and I'm gonna get it to be nice and pretty, right sort of in the middle, right about here, okay? And I'm gonna get it right to about right there, okay? Voila, there it is. Now I can zoom into it, and then this is basically my photo shoot. This is where I can start to render it. Now, I'm not gonna wanna render my rocket chair at a complete side view, unless you're giving me like a detailed sheet, like a military side view, whatever. We'll talk about that later next week when I do a presentation demo for you, okay? So now I'm gonna select my grouping. I'm gonna rotate my rocket chair like a three-quarter angle, because three-quarter angles look awesome. And then you're gonna get your camera locked in about here. Once that's done, I'm now gonna go save this but don't save over the original studio lighting. Go to file and save it as rocket chair studio lighting. That way, anytime you save over it again, all your shaders, textures, or anything that you're assigning are all mapped up in the same file, and it's there, and you're not saving over the original studio lighting. Does that make sense? That way, on future projects, you can open up studio lighting or render studio, whichever one we're using, or if someone in here, I found another one the other day on Creative Crash. You could open that up and it's the key file and then you save it back separate, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I already put a demo up on using the Hypershade. I'm gonna come up under Window, Rendering Editors, scroll over to Hypershade. Boom, my Hypershade pops up, here it is, okay? I'm gonna start up here with just some blends, shiny materials. Blend, 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 I clicked it three times. And here come my blends right there, okay? And then I'm gonna come down here, if I drop this cursor right about there, about halfway, and I look over Maya Material X. Hit that a couple times. And seeing it put like four in my C now. So what happens now that it's in my Hypershade, when I double click, let's start with the blend. Blend just has colors, but it's shiny, okay? So I'm gonna come over here, go to blend, double click, 
click a color and say red. Voila, done. And go to my next blend, double click that, double click color, and then I'm gonna pick green on that guy, okay? Now remember, blends are shiny. What was flat matte finish? Lambert. Lambert, that's right. So if you want a flat finish, you could use that, okay? Now I'm gonna sign this, I'm gonna middle mouse button drag and drop from the hyper shade to the object and it highlights it, okay? If you don't want a middle mouse button, you could select it here, it puts a yellow box around the surface that you want and then I could right click on the object and say, hold on, it's not doing it. There I can, excuse me, touch the object with independent selection and wait a minute, it's not doing my assigned selection. What's going on? Oh, that's why I'm doing it backwards. Select the object, come over here, right click, and I could say assign material to selection. Okay, I haven't had my coffee this morning. So if I hit assign material to selection, boom, that's now red. So the, the benefit of that is if you had lots of detail like little bolts or screws or items on your model and you group them all together, now you could just select the group in the outliner, right? And then you could go under here right click on this and say assign to selection. You don't have to go and individually assign that red or green or whatever to every single nut or bolt or detail that you have inside your model. Okay, it makes it really efficient that way. So now that's blends. The My Material X has natural presets in it. So if I double click on My Material X right here, I go up to presets, it has chrome, copper, frosted glass, glossy finish, plastic, okay? I'm going to select glossy finish. It even asks me if I want to replace like any colors or textures underneath and then I can even have options if I wanted to blend it in. I'm just going to hit replace right now. Okay. After that's done, I've assigned it. I've told it what it to be. Now I'm going to come over here and click on color and I'm going to pick a color. Let's say, let's do red. So that my material right now, okay, I'm going to put that on my ground to see what happens. You can double click on the listing right here, hold on, you used to be able to double click on it. And, oh, it's not letting me do it for some reason. I used to be able, you know, maybe they changed it in this if I come over here and find it listed here. And, well, I used to be able to click on it right here and you could relabel it if you want. Maybe I'm just double clicking, I don't know why it's not. Um, Anyway, that's where maybe that's something they changed. It just keeps bringing up the option box. But anyway, there's a way to relabel it in there. So if you want to know exactly what the shader was, that's fine. Right click. Now, and then. Huh? Oh, no, I'm talking about uh, renaming. See where it says my material? It is? Where? Oh, that's why. It used to be closer. So, yeah, if I hit rename now, it'll bring this up, and I could say ground. Thank you, guys. I was looking I was looking up above because that's where it used to be. Okay, there. Now I got ground, right? Boom. Now it's called ground. Oh, I put grood, all right? But now I know what it is, and I could just drag it and assign it if you want. So you can relabel them if you like. Let me go to another of my material. I'm going to go over here, presets. The ones I know that work really well are copper, chrome, and glossy finish, glossy plastic. Some of the other ones can work too, but we've had some problems with them before where you have to mess with them and go through the adjustments, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is let's just for the fun, let's just say Chrome, okay? And then hit replace, all right? Excuse me, Chrome, replace. And I get that little highlight there for Chrome. So that's Chrome now. And then this guy here, I'm gonna make copper. So I'm gonna go to the next my material, come back here, presets, I'm gonna go to copper, okay, hit replace. That's copper now. I'm going to drag that and drop that there. Okay. Once you get that all done, you can close some of these windows. And you can come in here, get up on your object like that, and hit render. Now, I haven't gone over some of the render settings. I thought I put a demo up. But there's some render settings that do really nice high res. But for right now, if I just hit render, it's pre on my machine. It's going to give me the smaller box. I think I mentioned that before in one of the demos that I put up. If you go under render and the options, okay, I can go and I could find uh, HD 720 or HD 1080, or I can even type in my own size. I can do, there's a, a b option box there for proportions, and I could do HD like 2200, and it'll render nice. Okay, it's still rendering. See it, the patch going right here. 
And it's going, it's going to do that, and then it'll do one more pass of, of details on there. Look at how sweet it is, right? See, it picks up all those realistic shaders, the plastic, the glossy finish. So, if you use more blends, it will render faster. But you can still use the My Material X's. You can also experiment. If you look on that list, there's My Material X paint. It mimics like paint of cars. Some has like a sparkle finish. Okay, this is where in rendering you could experiment for years. Okay, it's a whole another category. People are like render pros. Okay, and the reason why, so there's my render right now. Looks pretty cool, right? And then what we can do later in Photoshop is we could take out that background. You have just the model, and we'll put that on a presentation page. And then you'll have a toy design. Okay, so that's how I used Render Studio right there. Now, the one thing I didn't show you, gosh darn it, I'm going too fast. Um, let me back up here after this render is, after you have a render done, you have to save it. It doesn't, it's just temporary, it's showing it to you. In order to save a render, in this option box right here, it's going to have a listing for file. Give me a minute, let it finish up. This is really important. Let it finish up right here. So do you see the benefit? Imagine some of your models are pretty busy. Once you assign all these, it might take your computer, or the computer here, 10 minutes to render because of all the detail you could have. So look, after I did this, do you see in the render option box here where file is? Rebecca, do you see where it is? OK, it's right here. Not this file. That's the file for the main program. Right here under the render view window, I have file. If I go to file. Save image, desktop, okay, and then let's say I'm going to call my image uh, test render one. Then look, file type down below. This is important here. It's on PSD right now. That can be good. I recommend that you usually save in two formats. Sometimes a couple formats get truncated when we open them in Photoshop. It's this weird transition of the files. So I could save this file right now as a PSD. So I'm going to hit Save on my desktop. Boom. Then I can come back in again, hit File, Save Image, label it again, Test Render, 1. And now instead of PSD as a backup, I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to save it as a, a TIFF. Wait, let me see where my TIFF option is. Grab the scroll bar here, scroll down there a little bit, and there's TIFF. Boom. I'm going to save as a TIFF. Okay. Awesome, that's saved now. So now, once I close that, I'm back on my scene here. I want to save this scene again as the core scene, okay? At, not as studio lighting, but as rocket chair studio lighting. That way, everything's assigned to it, can always open it and make adjustments really quick, okay? So watch what happens. Now, if I come on my desktop here, look, I have the two files right here. I have a TIFF and the PSD, and if I grab these right here, And if I drag these onto Photoshop right now and open them up. Okay, when your object is all, has all the materials assigned to it, if you want to get any information assigned to a piece or a mesh, touch it, and all you have to do is hit Control A, and it brings up the attribute editor. In the attribute editor, everything that deals with that particular piece of geometry or what is assigned to it is listed right there. So if I look over, look, there's sphere five. It tells me the details of that sphere. If I go one step over to blend, right there, that's the color. So if I want to change the color on that object without having to go to the hypershade, I can do that through the attribute editor. And also in the attribute editor, every single one of the colors that you assign individually has tons of options you can mess with. Look at this. If I come down here, transparency. So if I drop this right now, it's going to make my sphere transparent. That's how we get glass. Okay. So in the, I have incandescence. I have bump mapping. Bump mapping allows me to come in and put a texture of like frosted whatever, little bumps, and then that incorporates in. And this opens up a whole new world for rendering and texturing because I have all these presets in here. Presets of common materials, specular shading, special effects, opacity, all these different things down here that are assigned. And that's just one material that I created really quickly that's assigned to my object, okay? So um, start 
make sure what is due, just to get this on the, the recording, what is due at next class? You're Your model completely finished. I'm going to check it off. And if I check it off and it looks half-assed, I'm not going to give you full credit for it being due. So we talked about adding details, wing flaps, adding lights, chairs, lots of controls, big buttons everywhere. Make that stuff pronounced where you can see it, right? Skateboard, skis for wheels, wagon wheels, all that stuff to make it look super cool. If you give me just a chair with a rocket engine on it, that's not just enough. We need to push the design. I talked about that last class. All right, you're free to go. Have a good weekend.